Okay. Now I'm going to share my screen. Hmm. Okay. So thumbs up. Does everybody see the cookie rookie PowerPoint pop up? Sorry that I'm late. Got it. I couldn't get I couldn't get on on doing it from my phone. Okay, that's fine. Don't worry. Okay, so um I just want to welcome everybody here tonight. Thanks so much for coming. Um my name is Kelly Dreschler. I am the product sales manager here at the Girl Scouts of Suffolk County. Um basically the point of these trainings is well, the point of my trainings. Or did not, you're not going to go off tonight and be the next cookie guru. You're not going to remember probably half the stuff I say tonight. Um, I want you to leave here tonight feeling comfortable emailing us and asking us a question and not guessing. I want you to leave here feeling comfort. That's what I'm really looking for. Not for you to remember every little piece of information that I'm going to say tonight. Um, things happen in phases in, in product sale land. So there's, you're going to, we're going to talk about something tonight that you're not going to do till April, you know, so you're really not going to remember everything and that's perfectly fine. Um, so I just wanted to make sure there's a comfort level there. Um, like I said before, we are recording this. So um, if you have to hop off, feel free um, and just come back and watch it or you can email me any questions. Um, but we will do our best to get you out of here as fast as we can uh, with as much knowledge as possible. So the first thing I'd like to go over is I, I like to start with the, the papers and the materials that you get when you start your cookie program. Um, so I always start with what I think is the most important, which is the parent guardian agreement. Okay, so what happens is before you give any of the parents a order card or their money envelope or anything like that, you want to make sure that they sign the permission slip. Because what happens is, is at the end of the sale, when they decide to not pay you, um, you are going to use that permission slip to, to um, show me that they gave authorization for their daughter to sell. Um, and that alleviates the troop from owing the money, and then the council will go after the parent. Um, so you want to make sure that you, you do that first and foremost. Um, you want to keep it in a safe spot. Um, what a couple people do from years past is they take pictures of them. Um, and then they just email them to themselves. So that way they have it forever. That's fine. I don't need the original. I just need something. Okay. So um, that I always start with because it is the most important. Um, I've been with the Girl Scouts for 15 years. Um, eight of them were in um, membership and half of them, the other half were in um, product sales. I have three daughters and I was their cookie mom. So this, in fact, happened to me where a parent decided to never show up again, told their kid the meetings were canceled, um, and owed the troop $500 for cookies. So I could first firsthand tell you it happens. Um, but again, the troop wasn't responsible for it, and neither was myself because I followed the proper procedures. So um, just make sure, very, very important that you do that. Um, I'm going to show you on the next slide. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through the list real quick and then we'll look at pictures of everything, okay? So the next would be the troop chair agreement. Usually that is a piece of paper, um, but due to our COVID circumstances, I've decided to put it as a link on our website. Um, so you're not gonna get that from your service unit. Um, you're just gonna fill it out online. If you need to do that, um, it'll, it'll probably be on our website by the end of the week, I'm hoping. But if you want to get it done sooner, you can email me and I can email you the link so you could get your form filled out faster. You might actually have gotten it from your service unit cookie chair. Um, I'm actually going to pause for one second um, and explain to any of the new leaders or new troop chairs um, that what a service unit is. Okay, so what happens is in Girl Scout land, um, think of a service unit as a school district. Okay. So each school district has their own service unit, with the exception of a couple. Like um, I'm part of Sachem, we're two service units because we're so large. Connectquat, two service units. So when I say service unit, I kind of just mean school district. In each service unit is a team. There is a coordinator who's kind of like the little president. 
she's appointed or he's appointed by the council um, and they oversee everything in their town okay uh, i'm sorry if there's background noise my dog is barking um little rat dog who shut up um <laughs> so um then they have other positions too they have a service unit treasurer they have service unit events people um so basically a service unit is basically your town so the service unit also does have a service unit cookie chair who helps monitor all the cookie program for the troops in that town so when i say your service unit cookie chair that's who i'm referring to um you should probably hear about them soon um we just had their training this past saturday so they'll probably be touching base with everybody very soon um but so your troop cookie chair agreement is kind of like your parent permission slip. It kind of tells me who's in charge for your troop. So once you get that filled out and handed in, um, we will add you into the eBuddy program, and then you'll have access to use the eBuddy program. eBuddy is the computer system built by our bakery, which is Little Brownie Baker. There are two Girl Scout bakeries. There is Little Brownie Baker, and there's ABC Bakery. Um, Probably some of you have heard about a new cookie this year called the Toast J. Um, the Toast J is with the other bakery, so we will not have a new cookie this year. Um, I'm thinking next year we, we will. They, that's what they keep telling us, but you know anything can happen, as we have learned in 2020. Um, so we're supposed to, I think, have a new cookie next year, but only time will tell. Um, okay, so just to, I just wanted to give a little bit of le little bit of a lesson there in case anybody you know, doesn't understand what I'm talking about. Um, next, we're gonna look at the order card. Um, also, we're gonna look at a catch-up form, and I'm going to explain these forms as we go through the presentation. Um, anybody who has is a returning cookie person, um, we're not gonna do the paper forms this year. We're gonna do what we did for fall and have it as an online reservation. Um, receipt books, those I'm not gonna show you a picture of, when you get your paperwork, it looks like a little carbon copy book. It's about this big. Um, and we're going to go through that as we go through the presentation. Initial sale receipt, money envelope, pretty self-explanatory. Um, deposit slip, I'm going to show you a, a picture of one a little later. And also your guidebook, your cookie Bible. Okay. Um, so I'm going to skip. Next slide. So the first, as we talked about earlier, is the parent-guardian agreement. This is what it looks like. Um, the parent can keep the top part. You can keep the bottom part. You can make copies of it. I don't care. You can make, take pictures of it. I just recommend not giving out any paperwork or product without having this in your little hand, okay? Because it'll save you at the end. Laura, how are we doing on questions? Anything? We're good. Okay, moving on. If I can. Okay, this is what the paper troop chair agreement looks like, um, but you will be filling this out online this year. Basically, everything here is just basically online. Um, it's just a little less contact, you know, a little contactless, you know, a little bit more COVID free, you know, friendly. Um, so just, this is just what it looks like. Nothing too, you know, fun there. Um, one thing I want to point out, actually, two things. Anybody who handles the product in your troop needs to be registered. So they need to be a registered adult. And they also need to be background checked. Okay? So just um, keep that in mind. If, if you're not the cookie chair and someone else is stepping into the role, um, that they do need to register. Um, and they do need to be background checked. Now this can come out of troop funds because they're, they're doing a service for the troop. So if the troop does have the funds, they can pay for the troop cookie chair to register. I'm seeing a couple chats. The troop chair agreement is not gonna be on the website. It's gonna be a link. Um, I think our communications department is currently updating the website from full to cookie. So I'm hoping that it's up there by the end of the week, early next week, the latest. Um, but if you need the link, you can just email me, Kay Dreschler. I'm sure you've seen my email 9,000 times. Um, oh. Kay Dreschler at gssc.us. Um, all the forms, yes, they will be on the website also. We're just 
trying to do that transition. Um, how do I register and get a background check? Laura, do you want to step in and, and address that? Laura is with our membership department. So there's two ways, depending on specifically how your individual troop is handling it. The troop leader themselves can go into the system and register. If you um, have given them the $25, the troop is paying for the $25 to have you registered. Once you register, you'll be sent a link through the system to do your background check. If the troop is not registering you, you can go right to our GSSC website, click on join, and then you'll be able to be a part of your daughter's troop. It'll ask you which troop number and all that kind of stuff. If you don't see your daughter's troop, you can click on shore and then we'll transfer you right into her troop. If you have a background check that you did last year, it only needs to be renewed every three years. So that's not something that you'd have to do new every year. It would just need to be done every three years. If you were cookie chair last year, do you need to wait from the service unit and create new login information? Every year is a new login because um, that's, that's a, that's a um, bakery rule. Um, so once I have your agreement, I'll add you in. It'll send you a welcome email and then you can get back in. It's going to ask you to change all your information, update anything, and then you'll be back in. Okay. So it looks like we're up to date there. Okay, so this is our um, order card. So I'm sure if you've gotten your paperwork yet, um, you've seen it up close. It's a little blurry from the picture, um, but we do have initial sale rewards. Now there's different phases to the sale we're gonna go into in a little bit, um, but these are the rewards they can earn on that phase. Operation Cookie, we'll touch base on too. Um, digital Cookie for, for girls that sell online. Um, now, here's the, I call it the tchotchkes. Here's all the tchotchke rewards, okay? So up to 399, the girls can earn everything here. Now, they're cumulative. So what that means is, if, I, if you have a girl in your troop that sells 400 boxes of cookies, she's going to get everything, okay? Up until this point, she's gonna get every single item, okay? Then, let's say you have a girl who sells a thousand boxes, okay? So what that's gonna happen is, is she's still gonna get all the tchotchkes, okay? But then she's gonna get to shop with her points at the bottom for the, for the um, premium rewards. So if she has a thousand boxes, she can shop for two 500 prizes or one 1,000. And the same thing goes, I think our top seller last year, I wanna say sold like almost 5,000 boxes, even with COVID. Um, and she gets a ton of stuff, but she also donates a lot of stuff. So she gives a lot to the Ron and McDonald house and um, things like that. Um, so at that, in that case, then they would get to shop with their rewards. So this is basically what that looks like. I wanted to show, I'm just gonna get off of here for a minute. Cause also on your order card is um, all the cookies, all the fabulous cookies. So I'm gonna show you just a quick video from our bakery that explains all the cookies and everything like that. It's a quick one. <laughs> Is it pausing? Come on. Sorry, I'm just yelling at my children to get off the internet. Yeah, I'm not going to make you sit through this if it's going to keep pausing. Okay. 
So we are not going to watch the video because I'm not going to make you sit through pausing. But um, what I can do is I could try to share it with you after the after the training. It's basically it's basically telling you that um, all the nutrition facts about the cookies that they are um, certified kosher and things like that. So it's just, a, it's a really good informative video, but for some reason it just doesn't seem to want to, um, want doesn't seem to want to, well. <laughs> Here, Kel, I'm gonna interrupt just for one second. Okay. So um, we did have a question. So the Girl Scout year runs October 1st to September 30th, and we start our renewal process, which we call early renewal in pretty much May. So we start our emails to renew in May, through girls, leaders, adults, and all of that. So any girl who is registered and has a valid email address would be reached out for the Digital Cookie Network. So that's how the Digital Cookie is sent out. So I know that that pops up in two questions. So if a girl is currently not renewed or doesn't get the email, there's a possibility that A, her email is invalid or incorrect, or that she doesn't have a current registration for the 2020-21 year. And the same would be for an adult as well. If you're not sure if you're renewed, then you could do that. So how do you know when you're to renew your background check? It's good, your background check is good for every three years. And also a month before your background check is expired, you receive an email from the system. Also, you can go into your MyGS, which is where you did renew, and it'll tell you on there when your background check is set to expire as well. Thank you, Laura. Um, I also see one here, when will the cookie email be sent out to the parents? The cookie email for digital cookie is usually sent out like the week before. Um, they haven't, I haven't uploaded them yet. They haven't, GSUSA hasn't asked for them yet. Um, so that, cause they do all of the councils. So it just takes some time, but usually it goes out either a couple days or at least a week before. Um, the sale is very similar to the nut sale um, in procedure wise. It's just a different database. So all the procedures are pretty much exactly the same. We try to do that to make it easier for you guys um, to kind of mirror as much as we can. Um, so it is almost identical. It's just for full, you use M2, the website, and for cookies, you use eBuddy. Okay, so I'm sorry that that video wasn't playing because it is a cute little video. So yeah, let's would you just be able to verify when the sale starts? Um, we're going to get to that in one of the slides coming up. Okay. Okay. This is what a cookie cupboard authorization form looks like. This is basically what you used to use to do a catch-up form, to do like a catch-up order, which I will explain in a little bit. Um, we're going to be doing them online, but it'll be asking for the same information. So that's why I thought it was a good idea to show you guys. Um, so basically we're going to ask for your ID and things like that. Um, cause again, this is kind of like my permission slip. Um, not many things in life are, are picked up somewhere on consignment. <laughs> so, um, this is kind of my saving grace, you know, so it's my permission slip that whoever picked up those cookies is going to pay for them. Okay. Next we have our cookie initial sale receipt. So we started using this a couple of years ago. This is actually something I made up when I was the cookie mom for my daughters. Um, the first year I did it, there were... I think we had about 15 daisies in the troop um, and everybody sold a lot of cookies. So I asked for all their order cards um, and something that should have taken me about an hour was taking me about three because I couldn't understand anybody's handwriting. So we all know what those order cards look like. You know, little grandma writes a check mark and not a one. So you're trying to figure out what these forms say. So this is just a new tool where you would give this to the family of the girl and they would tally up their own sheet. Okay, so they would tally up their own order card, fill in the grand totals on this sheet and hand it into you. So that way you can enter it into the computer. It's just gonna save you a lot of time than having to tally up 15 order cards or more. Um, so we started using this a couple of years ago. I was giving it out as like a, as like a, you know, something to use if you want to. And I was like, you know, well, let's just make it a form because it is a good tool. So um, that's in your packets from your service unit. Um, let's see, I have a question here. Hi, Kelly, if our troop members have changed, is that updated automatically in eBuddy based on what is in GSSE or do we need to let you know that? 
um, from however they're registered in membership is how they should carry over into eBuddy. Okay, so if it happened very recently, you might have to tell me, but if, if it happened a while ago, you probably don't. Um, do, 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 can also make any changes that are needed as well. Yeah, so anything you see wrong, we're gonna go over it in a little bit. Anything you see wrong in eBuddy, you could just let me know and we fix it. You know, because computers aren't always 100%. Um, if you use the cookie initial service sheet, then you wouldn't have to collect the order cards from the girls, correct. So you, you know, at the end of the day, you're only going to be giving the order cards back to the girls so they know who to give their orders to. So it's one less thing to have to lose and one less thing to have to do because you're going to make the parent add it up. Um, okay, the, the server, yes, the service unit has the paperwork. Like I said, they just had their training this past Saturday. So um, they're probably starting to set up their cookie paperwork pickups and all that fun stuff, um, probably this week or next, okay? And I'm just gonna reiterate the um, cookie initial receipt. You can use your own business process and if you'd like to use the receipt mm -hmm. and collect their order cards to do their math, that's completely up to Got you. It. Or you can just use this, you know, you just have to remember to give them back their stuff. That's your own individual business process. I know my leader, requires us to email everything to her so she has it in a digital form so however you would like to collect it is really your mm -hmm. business process we're just giving you a few tools and tips on ways that we know work best correct uh, you know like we can only give you the tools it's up to you guys how you want to use them you know so um as we come up with things that we think are helpful we create them and we share them but if this if you hate this then you don't have to use this so this is what a deposit slip looks like if you've not seen one before. The council banks at Capital One. So whenever you collect money and checks from your parents, um, you would have to go to any Capital One, use this deposit slip and make your deposit. So just where the little blue arrow is, that's where it should be coded with your truth number, okay? So for instance, this is my twin's truth number, 2767. So if you are troop 1222, then they should say 1222. Um, so just make sure that you're not using anything from another troop, because that sometimes happens. You know, you don't realize it. You have two troops, three troops, and you're using the wrong one. Um, make sure I covered it up because I didn't have one handy. But underneath the arrow, it should say cookie campaign and not full campaign, okay? Because it's two different bank accounts, okay? If you happen to use the wrong one, don't panic. Just send me a picture of it and I will find it and fix it, okay? It's just, if you use the correct stuff, it's one less thing you have to do, okay? So that is what a deposit slip looks like. Okay, so the, there's a couple forms here I didn't give um, pictures of, receipt books. Now receipt books, um, like I said before, they're little tiny books with little carbons so that way you can give receipts to people. I recommend giving receipts anytime you give out product to a parent and anytime you collect money from a parent. What happens at the end of the sale is, um, and this happens every year, there's always troops that I have to call and say they owe money and they go, well, everybody paid me, but okay, well, send me your stuff or send me pictures of your stuff and I'll try to figure out who owes it. Um, and they have nothing or they scribbled something on a piece of paper. In order for me to help you, I need to have some sort of starting point. So receipts really do come into play. I have to tell you the receipt book that the bakery makes, I hate it. It's the tiniest thing known to man. Uh, and I'm a big writer. So I'm like a big bubbly writer. So I made my own receipts, which is perfectly fine. But just remember the receipt book that we're giving you is carbon, so you don't have to write things twice. Um, but it didn't work for me. So I made it work for me and I created something else. So just give receipts because like I tell you, you might think that, oh no, everything's going to be hunky dory. Just do it because it really, at the end of the day, if you need help um, figuring out who owes money, it's hard for me to help you if I don't have something to look at and start a starting point. Okay. I see some chats coming in. I got them. I answered them. You got them all? Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, darling. Okay. Next is the money envelope. So it's kind of silly that I always joke that, you know, putting the money envelope up here is kind of silly. 
But here's the thing with the money envelope that people don't realize. You set the tone with the parents in your troop. You are the one who stepped up to do this, okay? So it's your rules, okay? So here's what I suggest. You make rules where they understand you're not gonna throw the money envelope at me and leave. You wanna be able to count that money before someone leaves, okay? I used to tell them, because I wasn't the troop leader, so I used to tell them um, 15 minutes before the girls stop meeting, you know, and this is in normal times, not COVID times. Um, I'll be at the meeting. So if you have anything to drop off to me, I'll be there to give you a receipt, count your money, do your thing. Um, nowadays, you know, it might be a little bit different. You know, you have to come up with a different process for it. Don't let them leave it in your mailbox. I had that happen once where the person left the money in the mailbox, but they didn't even put it in an envelope. My mailman came to the door because my husband works overnight and he knocked on my door and said, dude, I don't think you want this in your mailbox. It was a wad of cash. It was small bills, but still. So people sometimes don't think. Um, so just make sure that that money envelope, it's not, it, it has rules behind it. Okay. You don't want it to say on the, you don't want them to write on the front of the money envelope. There's $400 in here. And then you get home and open it. And there's only three. You know, so then comes into play, he said, she said, you know, so just, these are just things I like to put out there that sometimes people don't realize, okay? Um, and the last thing that I'm not gonna show a picture of is the guidebook, because it's very large, um, it's very handy. We put as much information in there as we possibly can. Um, so if you have a question, nine times out of 10, the answer is in there. Um, so that's always should be your starting point but you do always have us and your service unit to fall back on, okay? Especially if you're not understanding something, I'd rather you ask than do it wrong. Um, I see one other thing in the chat. Um, is it possible that parents enter all of their paper orders online? If so ultimately that means I don't collect any checks or cash, correct? Um, though there is not a way for them to enter it online, like you can do that for full, but the eBuddy system doesn't allow that, okay? So for initial sale, no, they cannot. There is different options for the girls to, to um, sell online, and I'll go through that in a little bit. I'm a virtual troop leader, and I assume most of my girls are going to be selling virtually. Could you talk more about the online process? I will later on. I'm gonna go into it in a couple minutes, okay? Okay, let's go to the next slide, okay. Couple things that are new this year, very similar to last year, is last year we did what was called instant rewards. So as soon as the girls get their cookies for initial sale, you're gonna hand them patches if they earn them. So if a girl sells 25 boxes, she's gonna get the 2021 patch. And if a girl sells 50 boxes, she's gonna get the goal getter patch, okay? So you're gonna be given those at your cookie delivery. And I'll go through that in a minute. Um, another thing that is new this year, if you have 100% participation on initial sale, um, the leaders in your troop will get two sets of ice cream bowls, okay? Um, last year we did this and it worked out really well. I don't remember what we gave last year, but it's usually something pretty cute. Um, and their they're, they're plastic items are really well made, so it's really a cute item. The lemon up tray. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Laura, it was. I just couldn't remember. Leave it to Laura to remember. Okay, so there are three phases to the sale. Okay, the first phase, which is gonna start on December 21st, that's when the cookie sale begins, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and it goes all the way till January 29th, okay? So it's a little over a month long. Girls take orders on their paper order cards, and they also set up their digital online sites, okay? Where they can send emails to people, um, and um, get orders that way. All order card orders need to be entered into eBuddy by the troop by February 1st, okay? Um, be sure to only enter paper orders. I'm gonna go over in the next slide the difference between a girl delivery order, which is placed online, and also a direct shipped order, okay? So we're gonna skip one slide. So girl delivery. So when a girl sets up her site um, and sends out her emails to her friends and family, um, the, the customer has two types of choices to make. 
during initial sale. They can choose to have the girl deliver the product where they don't pay any shipping. Um, and all those orders carry over into the eBuddy section. That's why you want to make sure that you're only entering the paper orders, okay, that are true paper. Because if you enter the girl delivery orders, you're going to get double, okay? So you don't want that to happen. Even though you have plenty of time, this we have the sale that never ends. So, as you know, we have plenty of time for you to get rid of cookies if there's any errors made. So don't panic on that. So that's what a girl delivery box is, okay? The next option the customer has is a direct shipped option where they would purchase online and pay for shipping, okay? The girl touches nothing, the troop touches nothing. It goes directly to the customer um, and it does also automatically carry over into eBuddy. So any orders placed online by the girl's site um, is automatically carried over into eBuddy, okay? It mirrors what we do for full, okay? Um, what happens is once initial sale on January 29th ends, the girl delivery portion goes away, okay? And then it's strictly direct shipped orders or they can do operation cookie, which we'll go over in, in a couple slides. Um, initial sale, what happens is, is you're gonna take those paper order cards, you're gonna go into your eBuddy account, um, you're going to go into the initial sale area of the website. I'm going to show you live what you do. Um, and you're going to enter those paper card orders, okay? What happens then is all those cookies that you put into that site and the girl delivery boxes will get shipped to your service unit cookie chair. She designates a day and time and sets that up with me um, for cookie delivery, okay? Um, I believe this year we start cookie delivery the week of February 8th. So what happens is, is then she'll be in contact with you on when and where to come pick up your cookies, okay? Then you bring them back to your home and you disperse them to your troops, to your girls in your troop, okay? Um, I see a couple questions or... Can, will we have the paperwork and garbage under the cookies and more tab on your website shortly as well as when given the service unit break? Yes, 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 we will. Um, like oh, I said, we're answer. just trying to... Um, we're just trying to make that transition from full to cookies right now on the website. Um, um, lemon up trays, the leaders of the cookie leaders. Um, basically what happens is we designate two of those rewards per troop. If you have more people in your troop that need the ice cream bowls, you just shoot me an email and I'll get you what you need. You know, we never deny anybody who's helping out a set of rewards, okay? So does everybody kind of get thumbs up if we get what initial sale is? Okay, now initial sale, remember on that order card, there's that little section where the girls can earn those special rewards just for the initial sale portion, okay? So um, just keep that in mind. Once the initial sale is over, those rewards can't be earned anymore. Then they go into the second set of rewards. Okay, so the second phase of our sale is called the ketchup orders. It's the ketchup phase. Um, the difference between this and initial, oh, I see a puppy dog, um, is your service unit is not gonna get these cookies at this point. You have to come to one of our cupboards and pick up the cookies, okay? Um, it doesn't have to be you per se. It could be any adult in the troop, um, anybody who is willing to sign their name and take responsibility for what they're picking up, okay? Um, Ketchup orders take place, the, they can start taking orders the day after initial sale, which is January 30th, and the sale goes all the way till May 4th. Okay, like I said earlier, we have the sale that never ends. Okay, so it just keeps going and going. Like I said, girls continue to take orders. The difference is the troop needs to pick these orders up at the cupboard. We have three cupboards. We have one at the Comac office, we have one at Camp Edie, and we also have one in Riverhead. Um, they all have different hours. We haven't set up the hours per se yet because we're waiting to see what the world brings us at that time. Um, but um, they will be available on our website, okay, once we figure out what we're going to be doing hour-wise. Once you pick up your order, that transaction gets entered into eBuddy by the council, okay? 
So give us a couple days because we are working on a very small, small crew right now. Um, so give us a couple days to get those in. If you're picking up from Riverhead or Edie, give us a little bit longer because all the paperwork has to make its way back to Colmac, okay? Then you would have to go back into eBuddy and tell the computer who you picked up for. Because all I know is that you picked up for your troop. I don't know who you picked up for. So you're going to tell eBuddy and assign those boxes back to the girls who you picked up for, okay? The directions on how to do this are in your guidebook and they also will be available online, okay? Um, you can begin picking up orders at the cupboard the week of February 8th, okay? It's the same week that deliveries begin for the service units. Okay, I see some things popping up in the chat. Um, as of right now, we're not, we're not, um, we're not allowing boot sales, um, but that could change. You know, that's today. You know, tomorrow can bring a whole new different set of issues or good things. So we're not going to make a total decision on that um, until um, that time comes. Also, and of course, we do have standabouts. Standabouts are, um, are something we came up with for full, which is not a troop-run booth sale. It's kind of a family-run booth sale on their own property. So kind of like a lemonade stand. Um, so if the girl really has a goal that she wants to hit, um, she can take out a, you know, small amount of cookies and try to do like a lemonade stand-esque, you know, boot sale. We're calling it a standabout because we also have what's called a walkabout where usually the girl would take out a walkabout and walk around the neighborhood knocking on their neighbor's doors and asking them if they wanted to buy cookies. Again, we don't know what the spring is going to bring. Um, our boot sales usually begin in February, which is quite a long ways off. Um, so we'll, we're going to play that by ear. Um, if anything, I'll have another webinar, Zoom call, um, as it gets closer and as we can make more, more accurate decisions. Um, I'll go over how it works taking out the cookies. Nope, they have to be at your home because as of right now, uh, standabouts have to be at your home. Um, because as of right now, Girl Scouts is not permitting any trips. So um, a boot sale somewhere else other than your own home would be considered a trip. So as of right now, just your home. Um, as of right now, walkabouts, I'd have to say, are not allowed because we don't want them to have contact with the public. Um, but again, like I said, on a, I'll probably have one of these little Zoom calls as it gets closer to those times. Um, once we can make a, a more educated decision about what's going on at that moment, you know, because everything changes by the second. Okay, so does thumbs up, does everybody understand what ketchup orders are? Okay, like I said earlier, I'm not expecting you to remember everything. It's a lot, okay? Just hearing it firsthand is a good thing, you know, and then trying to figure it out. But if you have any questions, that's what we're here for. So don't get too overwhelmed. So next we were gonna discuss booth sales, okay? Booth sales are right now supposed to happen February 5th through May 2nd, okay? Um, Cause we did write our guide, our guidebook as if it was gonna be a normal year. Um, but again, this is not set in stone. As we have our please note, um, the SACS of the sale is dependent on the safety regulations of that moment. So we'll have to take that into account as it gets closer. Um, I'm just gonna go over how to do a boot sale in case we are allowed to do it. That way you guys have a little bit of background on it. Um, and that way you're ready to go if, it's a, if it is a go, okay? So what I would do is this is, first of all, before you do any booking of boot sales, you wanna talk to your service unit or your service unit will probably talk to you guys about it first, about how they, do it how their way of work is. I'm gonna to explain to you the basic way to do it where like 95% of the service units do it this way, but there are 5% that don't do it this way, okay? So just make sure that you're getting the, the proper channels before you, know, before you start booking anything, okay? Especially since we're not really allowed to do it at the moment anyway. So first you would find a location, like for instance, I would call up the stop and shop in my neighborhood um, and I'd ask for the manager and ask for permission to do a boot sale on that day and time. 
they would give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. <coughs> Excuse me. Then what you want to do is you want to you want to email your service unit cookie chair because they keep a calendar of everything that's going on booth wise for their town. Okay, because so, what happens is is you might call Stop and Shop. There's quite a few managers at Stop and Shop. There's different kinds of managers. You might have spoken to one and maybe they forgot to write you down on the calendar um, and then someone else called to the same time. So your service unit chair is keeping a nice accurate calendar of the stores in her area or his area, you know, to make sure that there's no overlapping. The last thing you want is to show up at a booth sale and there's another troop standing there. Okay. It's disheartening to the girls. Um, sometimes the parents don't take it well. I'm going to say that kindly. Um, and you know, you just don't, it, it's just something you don't want to happen. So if everybody follows the rules, then this should never happen. Unfortunately in life, we know that not everybody does follow the rules. So this could happen. I just ask you if this does happen, do the Girl Scout thing. You know, either ask to share the location if there's two, if there's two entrances, or leave and bow out and we'll get you somewhere else to go, okay? What happens then is you would reserve your booth sale online um, on our website, because now your service unit knows, the store knows, now I need to know. So that way I know I have enough cookies for you. So you would fill out your form, tell me where you're going, what day, when you wanna pick up. Um, if you're doing a booth sale on say like a Saturday, I suggest picking up on that Friday, Thursday, Friday, what happens is, is you don't have to tell me what cookies to give you. I know what to give you for a booth sale. I know not to give you 10 cases of lemons or 25 cases of toffee. You know, I know what to give you that sells. So you would come and pick it up. Anybody in your troop can do this for you. You don't have to be the one to come pick it up. Um, and we would count it out with you so we agree with what you're signing out. So always double check us because we're sometimes frenzied, as most of you have seen for full. Um, and, you know, double check us. That's what we're, you were expecting. It's cold, it's windy, it's snowy. Double check us. You don't want to sign for something, then get home and realize you're missing half of it. Okay? So then you would go and do your boot sale. We're going to give you a deposit slip from the Capital One with your troop number on it. Um, that's specifically coded for you to use for that boot sale. Okay? My suggestion is to try to keep your payments separate. So again, if we ever have to back into a situation, um, we can look at your, your finances a little bit easier that way, okay? Um, so you go do your boot sale with your girls. We ask that you return the leftover product by that following Wednesday the latest, okay? Um, because what I do is I use the leftover cookies for the next weekend for more boot sales, okay? Um, before you return the leftovers, we ask that you hit the bank. And that way, when you bring your cookies back, we staple your deposit slip to your paperwork. Um, and then you are done with your boot sale at that point. Again, we're gonna ask you to give us a couple days to get that transaction put into eBuddy, okay? Um, and then you're gonna have to go back in and tell eBuddy who was at your boot sale. Um, if you have 10 girls in your troop and you sold 100 boxes of cookies, then give each girl 10 boxes of cookies. Now, the beauty of cookies over nuts is everything's the same price. So you don't have to worry about this one got a pretzel, this one got a fruit slice. It's all $5. So it doesn't matter flavor wise what you do, as long as you assign the cookies to the girls. Again, the directions on how to do this are in your guidebook. Um, and once you do it, it's like, oh my God, that was so easy. Okay, so don't panic. People have been doing it for many, many years. I'm sure everybody on this meeting can do it. Um, and if you have any difficulty doing it, you just shoot us an email and we'll help you out, okay? So that's a boot sale. I'm just going to jump over to the chat for a minute. Um, two, two, two. There's just a few questions about virtual selling of cookies, like on social media, about the policies, and just if they did I was actually going to show a social media video, but that doesn't seem to be working out. Um, there is a got. I'm going to... When I get there, I'm going to show you, um, there is a guidebook on our website, on the Little Brownie Baker website. In fact, you know what? We're going to jump. Um, I want to show you. 
littlebrowniebakers.com. Okay, this is our bakery. If you go to this website, everything is here. Okay, like you don't have to recreate the wheel on anything. Okay, so it's really a handy dandy little tool here. One of the things I pulled up is the virtual Girl Scout cookie booths step-by-step -step guide, okay? Even if you don't go to the right website, you can Google virtual Girl Scout cookie booths and it will bring up your guidebook, okay? It's basically a guidebook on everything that you have to do in order to do a booth sale virtually. So if you can't get to a store to do it outside the store, it is definitely something that is doable. Um, this will also be available on our website, but as far as other things to do, there's a volunteer section here. It's a fantastic website. Activities for girls, your cookie season planner. It shows you how to plan the whole thing. You can plan your whole cookie season right here. Cookie rallies for the troop. Um, talking to families, how you should talk to your families about the cookie program. Um, the girls, there's tons of activities for the girls to do. Uh, make your own goal t-shirt, um, things like that. It's just such a fantastic website that it's a shame more people don't go to it because it's already there for you. Um, if someone donates to Operation Cookie through online girl delivery, do they carry over like the other online girl delivery orders? Yes, they do. They do. Um, we will send the money money your troop earned with a direct deposit um what was that that was my answer to how they get their rebate okay thank you yes make sure that you have with your full paperwork if you didn't do full this will be available on the website i need an updated ach form every year which tells me your bank account information so once we have that on file when it's time to get your troop rebate we direct deposit it right to your troop bank account okay um, we're going to get into how much the troop earns. You guys are so eager. So crazy, crazy. Okay, from current slide. Okay, so we're done talking on boot sales. Stand about, we talked about for a little bit. I kind of stole some of the information from the nut flyer. Um, basically, the, the parents would request a pickup. Um, they would sell like a lemonade stand. They would return the leftover. Um, and I will resign it to the girl, so that way they don't have to worry about telling the troop leader or anything. Um, we do request that they pay for their product online. We have a we have a way a link on our website for people to pay with a credit card. Um, that's not having to do a digital cookie or anything like that. But I think handing out deposit slips to parents would just be too much. You know, I just think they wouldn't understand what they were supposed to do with it. So I think the easiest way for them to pay for their standabout is online. So once, <coughs> once they return their product, they would just go online and pay for their order. Um, and then those, those payments will carry over into eBuddy, okay? So Operation Cookie. So Operation Cookie is a great program. If you have somebody who doesn't want to buy any cookies or truly just wants to help out, um, we're, we're kind of morphing Operation Cookie slash Gift of Caring this year. Um, it might be something we do for further years, but for this year, we're going to do it because COVID is still, you know, relevant right now. Um, last year, uh, we did most of our Operation Cookie, we did donate to a lot of the essential workers, okay? Um, we donated last year over 100,000 boxes of cookies. Um, because our sale got cut short, anything I already purchased from the bakery belong to Suffolk County. So instead of throwing them out or doing something like that, we donated them. So along with Operation Cookie, we donated over 100,000 boxes of cookies. Okay, so that is fantastic. The girls can earn these special rewards if they have a certain amount of, of Operation Cookie. What we normally do is Operation Cookie is normally sent to uh, military, veterans, anybody who had to deal with, you know, the military or anything like that. Um, over here in the green box, um, what will happen is, is I also take requests. So if you have any girls in your troop or yourself, know of anybody in the military or a veteran or anything like that, um, we send them care packages directly to them, a case of mixed cookies. 
So if you have anybody that's active, non-active, we don't care. We want to show our love. Um, that's how we spread out the wealth of our Operation Cookie Boxes. Uh, we normally have about 45,000 boxes to, to divvy up. Um, so at the end of the day, once we do our care packages, we start donating to local vets places, um, and then we start looking for anybody who has any connections with any bases um, that we could do large donations to. I see some chat going on. Um, if parents have already signed a parent agreement for, um, for the fall, they still, nope, it's not valid. They need a cookie one. So fall is fall, cookies is cookies. Thank you, Laura. Um, say the council shuts down again and we have to bunch of cookies and we donate them. Are we responsible for the payment? As of right now, we're not expecting that. Um, and we'd have, that would have to be a discussion later on. Um, because what happens is, is most councils do what's called a direct sale where they order all of their cookies up front. They order everything. They don't take pre-orders on order cards like we do. So you really shouldn't have any extra cookies um, if you're taking pre-orders and not ordering any extra, okay? Um, if you end up in a pinch because maybe mom or dad got laid off and can't deliver their cookies that they sold at work, then that's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. But um, there should really be no extra cookies left to donate, okay? Even last year, we ended up taking back all the booth sales that were out. We just took them back in July, you know? So either way, we'll, we always seem to work it out. So don't worry about that. Um, I was a personal recipient of some cookies at the blood center this year too. That was cool. Thank you very much. We actually had a connection there. Um, and they actually, um, it's hard sometimes to get things donated, believe it or not. So it's nice to have connections places. Um, we donated a lot to some hospitals because a lot of people we know work in the hospitals. Um, my sister works with family service league. So we did a nice donation there too, you know, cause these are all essential people. Um, New Girl Scout sends an email. Thank you. They have to renew every year. Thank you, Laura. Okay, moving to next. Next, we're gonna talk rebates. So what do the girls earn for selling their cookies? They earn 70 cents a box, okay? Um, it went up from a couple of years ago from 60 to 70, um, and we started a tiered program. Well, if the per girl average for your troop is 200 to 299, they get an extra nickel per box. So then they would get 75 cents. Um, if they have a per girl average of 300 or more, they would get an extra 10 cents. So we'd be up to 80 cents. Um, cadets or older can opt out of the tchotchke rewards and get an extra nickel right off the bat. Okay. I'm going to show you how to turn that off if you wanted to do that. They would still earn all the patches. We don't deny the girls the patches. Um, and if they earn something in the premium reward section of 500 or more, they still get to choose their reward from the premium area, okay? They're basically just losing out on like the plush pony, you know, like things like that, okay? So let me see, do we have any questions on rebates? Just want to confirm if every order is made online, there is nothing for the troop to physically collect. Nope, there is nothing for the troop to physically collect for money. Um, they just have to, if it's a girl delivery, you just have to give them their cookies and they do not owe money for those specific cookies. They would only owe money for paper card orders. Okay. That's the only money they would have to turn in. Kelly's favorite line is if it's ordered online, it's paid online. You got it. I should make a t-shirt. I'll wear it. I know you would. Okay. We went over this already, but I'm just going to touch base one more time. Rewards are cumulative. Okay. So just remember that, you know, if a girl sells 200 boxes, she's going to get everything up to 200 boxes, not just what's for 200 boxes, okay? Um, here's another picture of our initial sale rewards. They could earn these patches for the instant. This phone, phone chair, it's really cute. And the pad folio. So there are quite a few little rewards there. Um, Operation Cookie has its own little set, and so does Digital Cookie. Uh, the times we're in, these girls should all have digital cookie sites. There's no reason not to. It's actually fun. It's interactive. They can earn patches. It, it's just so fabulous. So, I mean, as long as they can get on, they should be doing it. Um, 
Does Juliet's get the extra if they sell above? Juliet's are, are, are a special, um, a Juliet is a girl who doesn't have a traditional troupe. So for instance, it's usually, it's, a Juliet is usually older girls. Like for instance, my daughter is 16 and she's an ambassador, um, but she doesn't have a troupe at the moment. So she's registered as a Juliet. Um, so she can still do activities, Girl Scout events and things like that, earn her patches, um, but she's just not affiliated with a troop. So that's basically what a Juliet is. Um, Juliets can earn everything that an other girl, you know, in a traditional troop earns. We sometimes just have to tweak the system to make it work. So if you have a Juliet that is looking to get these extra rewards, you just have to touch base with me and we will, we will figure out a way. Um, so to answer the Sprout question, Sprouts was a program that we did four years ago. It was, the girls were never registered. It was just a very cute way to get girls interested in Scouts. It was a one-time event and we called them Sprouts because they were going to sprout into the daisies, but they're not registered and don't participate in any of the money earning programs and, and are not part of a troop. Thank you, Laura. Okay. So if, the, if your girls participated in full, they had the opportunity to earn the full avatar patch. Um, now they call it the cookie crossover patch. If they participated in the full program by sending out 15 emails in the full program and they sell 150 boxes of cookies, they're gonna earn the cookie avatar patch, which is actually quite, it's a quite a nice little patch with all the, the hands holding the world. Um, it's actually quite relevant right now. But um, they would have had to already have participated in full. So I, I'm not going to beat this down with a stick, you know, just so you, you know that the opportunity is there. Um, if they've already sent out their 15 full emails, it's kind of a way for us to try to get the girls to participate in both programs. Okay. Um, anything in the chat? Okay. So we do have a program coming up. It's a new program this year um, called Cookie University, okay? It's been all over Facebook the last couple of days. We started promoting it on the 4th. It's a cute program. It's gonna, I'm, I'm actually on the committee to run it. Um, it's for daisies and brownies. Um, and they get, they're gonna earn this little cute Cookie University patch. It's $5 per girl and a, there's a kit included for crafts and you know, things like that. Um, you can pick them up at any of our offices during the time frame. Um, but keep a lookout for that if you're looking for something to do with your kids. Um, it gets them hyped up about cookies. It'll happen on January 22nd. The week before that, we're actually going to do a cookie rally where everybody will be invited. Um, it's a cookie rally that's going to be virtual, obviously. Um, normally, we would try to do cookie palooza. Um, but... Um, Cookie Palooza is not going to happen, obviously, this year. So we're trying to do as much fun and get the girls hyped as much as we can about the, the things that, that make them feel normal, like they're back to, you know, the normal times. So Cookie University is actually something I've wanted to do for quite a long time. Um, and right now seems to be the perfect time to do it. So it's going to be a really cute program. Please join us if you want to. Doesn't have to be done by a troop. You could share it with your parents. Um, and um, they could do it individually. Okay, so it doesn't have to be something done as a troop. Let's see a chat. Um, okay, so um, Jan, we, I think we've, we've discussed this many times. Um, we will make sure that any girl who wants to get the extra nickel can get it. Sometimes we just have to make it work in eBuddy. eBuddy doesn't allow it because it's a troop incentive and not a Juliet incentive. But we will do a workaround and we will make sure that if the girl wants it, we will get it for her. Um, I will definitely send out the Cookie University sheet to everybody that signed up for, for um, the training tonight, okay? Okay, let's see what else we got. Okay, so let's go to eBuddy. I'm going to show you what eBuddy looks like. Okay. So that's because I have to reset. Okay, eBuddy. Okay, so I have signed in as my twins troop because that way you can see a troop view and not the council view. No one wants to see the whole bunch of everything. So these are the tabs that I'm going to tell you that you really need to look at. This is your dashboard. 
gives you a little synopsis of what's going on for your troop. What was sold last year is in the green, and what you would sell this year would be right next to it over here. Of course, right now it's zero because nothing's live yet, okay? This is your service unit contact. So if you don't know who that is, once you sign on to eBuddy, you should see it there, okay? It'll tell you your per girl average right here. We were talking about that about rebates before. It'll show you that right there. There's different other tools here. Remember I showed you how you could do your cookie planner? You can click right here, it'll bring you right to it. So there's lots of little fun things on here. Contacts tab, you're not gonna do anything with. This is just gonna show you who has access to your troop eBuddy account. This is my, my twins troop leader. So this is Lisa. So if, um, if there was anybody else who had access, they would be listed here also. Settings. The settings tab, you would click edit to make any changes. The only thing I'm asking you to look at is to make sure your level's correct, okay? So you could click on there and click the right level. Sometimes for some reason, it just doesn't carry over right. For some of you, this one carried over correctly, but it's always good to check it. If your cadets are up and you wanna opt out of rewards, you would click the button right here. It would then change to say you will receive additional, you will receive additional proceeds. I'm gonna unclick it because I don't know what they're doing this year. That is all you would do here. Then you would click update. So that tab is real easy. You're gonna hit it once and that's it, okay? This is the tab when you first get on, I want you to check, okay? The girls tab is gonna tell you all the girls that are registered in your troop, anybody, okay? So you wanna make sure everybody's there. Here's one of my kids, here's the other one, okay? If you're missing anybody, just shoot me an email and I will add them in. Don't add them in on your own because here's the trick. This GSUSA ID number, it's kind of like their social security number in Girl Scout land. This is what talks to the digital cookie site. It's not the matching of the name, it's the GSUSA ID number, because kids can have the same names. So if this number doesn't match what's in the other database, the sales won't carry over correctly. So if you're missing anybody, just shoot me an email. I'd rather you do this sooner rather than later. Um, you don't wait till the day before things are due. Um, I'm sure things come up and sometimes you have to, and I completely understand. Um, and I try to, and I do my best to get to everybody. So I, I you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that we get to everything. But the sooner rather than later to make sure your girls look right. If one is in there that shouldn't be, you just let me know and I can move them out of it, okay? That's all you would do here. So initial, initial order tab. This is where you're gonna add the girls paper card order in. They changed the look of it a little this year to make it a little bit more user friendly, okay? So anything they sell online for girl delivery is gonna carry over into this shaded line. So you're gonna see it point blank right there. It's not gonna be meshed in with other things. This is gonna be right here in bed in front of your face, okay? If you need to add in, I don't know if it's gonna let me. Okay, it did. I wasn't sure if I set the date right. Um, so Ariella, I'm gonna click on her, her order card right here and you see the little boxes pop up on the bottom. This is where you're gonna enter her paper card orders, okay? So you would just type in whatever she's ordering and that's it, okay? Over here, you see a little okay button. You can either click that or hit enter, okay? And then you would click save, okay? So now her order is there, and if she sold anything online, it would be there. And then there would be a grand total for her right here, okay? So once you add all of the girls' orders in, on the bottom here, it's gonna get a little bit, it's, it's a little tricky, okay? Because what happens is, is like I said earlier, most councils do what's called a direct sale, okay? Um, where they order full cases. So they don't need to, you know, worry about boxes or anything like that. They just order full cases. So the system is written where it's gonna order up, okay? So what I'm saying is, so right now, we need five lemon ups to fulfill the troop order, okay? It's gonna give me a full case, case order, which means I'm gonna have an extra seven, okay? So here's, here's your two options, okay? 
you can either leave it and take the extra seven. You are responsible to pay for anything ordered in this tab. So if you end up with the extra 64 boxes, your troop has to sell the 64 boxes, okay? If you don't want that, you could go back in. Now remember, you're gonna have more girls with more orders. I just put one order in. You could go in, change the order, so that it would only give you full cases. So I took her five boxes of lemons out. Um, and what I would do is, is I would then have to go to the cupboard and pick up her five lemons. So that way I didn't end up with an extra seven. Does that make, does everybody kind of get that? I'm gonna show you a little bit. Let's, let's do this. So I put in 25 boxes of lemon. So right now it's gonna give me three cases and 11 extra, okay? So what happens is if I don't wanna get those 11 extra, I have to go in here, change it to full cases. Now everything in Girl Scout land is 12 to a case, okay? Even in nuts, cookies is also the same thing. So I'm gonna change that to 24. It's only gonna give me two cases zero extra, but now I have to go to the cupboard and get her her one extra lemon. Does that make sense? It's hard when no, when no one's, it's hard when it's not live. How can they count for the initial sale? They don't, okay? So what happens is, is they're not gonna count for the initial sale. So you wanna make sure that you're trying to take cookies from someone who it's not gonna affect their reward, okay? So let's say that there's a reward at 50. So right now she has 51. So I don't wanna take anything more away from her than one more box. If you come into the, the problem of you have no choice but to take away from someone and it's going to change their reward, then you just call me, email me, and we'll get her her reward. I'll mail it to you, we'll drop it to you, we'll get it to you, okay? Um, but we try to tell you, try to take from a girl that it's not going to affect the reward. But unfortunately, sometimes there is no other option. So um, that's kind of where that is. Um, and then when, how do the girls get credit if you take it away? Once you pick it up as a ketchup order, you're going to go back in and you're going to assign it back to her. Just like a regular ketchup order, you give us a couple days to put it in. And then you're going to go back in and assign the one box back to her. Uh, you cannot manipulate the girl delivery boxes. Um, as you can see that they're grayed out, you can't touch them. Okay. The only thing you can manipulate is the paper card orders. Okay. Um, especially without being able to sell the extras at Boots. I agree. So my, my suggestion this year is usually I'm like, well, you got plenty of time to sell booth sales, um, but who knows what this year is gonna bring. So my suggestion would be to round down, okay? Don't get the extras this year because you don't know if you're gonna have a booth sale to get rid of them. So when the time comes, if you need help doing this, Melinda and myself, Melinda's my assistant, we will more than happy to walk you through it. You have plenty of time till you know till this is is due. So um, this is again one of those little tweaks we have to make. For the system is written for all the councils, and we run our sale a little bit different. Most councils, if you take out a boot sale, you don't return the extra; you own it. So we actually take back the extra, uh, which is a little more work for both ends. But at least you're not you're not flipping the bill for everything. Okay, so. How are we looking on chat? Good. So that means if we have all virtual orders, we will have a choice, but to have we we will have choice, but to have extras. You might, you know, it really just depends on how it how it falls, um, because you know if you're doing just the girl delivery orders, um, you might end up with a little bit of extra. You know, but the good thing is, is if you do end up with extra, we do let you swap at the cupboard for different flavors. So let's say you end up with 10 extra s'mores, but you have another reorder for Samoas, you could come and swap them and we'll, we'll let you swap them. Um, I'm just more concerned. I, I, 
the most you'll ever get in an extra is 11 of a flavor, okay? You're never gonna get more than that. And I can guarantee you that you could probably sell an extra 57 boxes pretty easily, you know, without doing a boot sale. Um, but, you know, this year will be a learning curve. And if we sense that there's an issue, we'll revisit it and we'll come up with a solution, okay? Okay, chat. They always, they always, they always go, please, people always want more. It's, it's so true, Lori, it really is. You know, and like I said, you're not going to end up with like 25 extra Samoas or 25 extra s'mores. The most you'd end up extra of a flavor is 11, okay? Will really be terrible if people are stuck with extras without a way to get rid of them. I hope there will be something to help out with this. Um, well, like I just said, I'm sure if this happens, I'm sure we will come up with some sort of plan, but we're not going to jump the gun. <laughs> I can eat 11. I can eat 11 too. We're not going to jump the gun and try to come up with ways to solve problems that may not even happen. So if we just, if we see that this is going to be a problem, then we will revisit it and we will come up with a solution. Um, delivery tab, um, you're going to do nothing with. If we don't use this tab, you're not going to be able to, you're not going to want to do anything here. Girl orders tab, this is where you're going to assign the extra boxes from catch-ups and booth sales, okay? So what's going to happen is, once we put in your, let's say you do a boot sale, okay? You sold 100 boxes. So once you, once you bring it back and we put it into the computer, the difference row is going to show 100 boxes of cookies. Right now it's zeros because there's nothing in there. So you're going to have 100, it's going to look like negative 10, negative 20, negative 10. So you're going to see all these negative numbers here in the difference column. To assign them to a girl, you're going to click on a girl. Um, it's not going to let me do it yet because it's not time. There will be a purple button here that says add transaction. You would click the add transaction button and the boxes would appear just like the initial sale and you would assign the girl the cookies. Okay. You would either click the okay or enter button. You would hit save done. Okay. Then you would, you could go here and switch to the next girl. Okay. Or you could go back to your main screen and see what numbers you have left then. Okay. It's not as difficult as, you know, people think once you do it, you're like, I got this. Okay. So just trust me on that. Okay. I see something in the chat up oh, just a thank you. Thank you. Okay. Transactions tab. There's nothing to do in this tab, but what this tab is going to show you is all the transactions for your troop. Um, it's going to show you digital transactions. <coughs> Excuse me. It's going to show you boot sale transactions. It's going to sh show you everything. In fact, let me see if I could switch years. If it lets me. Okay. Because this will show you a little bit because it'll have some data in it. It's just being very slow. It's thinking. It's usually not this slow. Okay. That doesn't seem to be wanting to play, right? So we're not going to do that, <laughs> but it'll show you. You'll see um, like um, on the receipt part, it'll say like DOC, and that means it's a digital order card order. Um, you'll see all the trans different transactions, the dates, um, and what you sold on those transactions, okay? So that one's a pretty, you're not going to do anything here. It's just for you to look at, okay? Transaction pickups, we do not use these. Um, what some councils do is they have cupboards because they're like the state of Colorado, so they have cupboards actually in people's homes. So they do like different transactions that way. We don't use this tab because we're not as geographically large as um, a state. Uh, let's see. How is the paid amount handled for boot sales when we assign to a girl? Is the amount paid automatically assigned to her? Or do we have to enter that? Um, 
we enter that, Carl. Yes, we do have to enter that. What will happen is, is the paid amount will go into the troop, and then you will just assign it under the Girl Order tab. What you can do is, um, I'm just going to move my chat box. Um, it'll have, you're, you'll have an option when you click on a girl of add transaction or add payment. So you could click on add payment and this will actually help you keep track of your payments also. Again, it's one of those things that you have to actually use. Um, we don't update the girl orders tab at council level because we don't know what the girl paid you and we don't know what the girl sold. I only know what the troop sold and what the troop paid. So if you wanna use this tab and use it for that purpose, that's fantastic. Um, it'll, my little pictures are, over here it'll tell you balance due and how much they paid. Um, it will show automatically what is paid online. It'll automatically carry over that. But anything paid to you in check or cash, you would have to physically input yourself. Okay, I'm just gonna move that over. Cookie exchange, we don't use. Um, rewards. Rewards is a nice little tab. Once you finish your, once you allocate all your cookies, um, there are no rewards for you to choose. It automatically does it for you. Okay. So what happens is um, the only time you would need to choose a reward is if they, it's, I don't have the rewards in yet, is if they hit the um, 500 or more mark, because you have to tell me what they want whether they want an American Girl doll or the blogging kit or things like that. So we would ask you just to input that, hit submit, done. Otherwise, all the tchotchke rewards, as long as you've allocated all your boxes, the system will figure it out for you. So you don't even have to do anything else there. Um, booth sites, we don't use at the moment. Um, the only time we use it is you'll see if you do do a booth sale, council will enter the location so that way it shows up on the cookie locator. Um, if a stranger was to go to the girlscouts.org website and is looking for cookies, like they're, they're really hankering, they need a Samoa, you know, they can put in their zip code and it'll tell them where the closest boot sale is. Okay. It'll tell them that there's a boot sale at one o'clock at their stop and shop. So this is all this is for. So there's nothing for you to do here. We just add your boot sales in there. So they show up on the locator. Um, and believe it or not, a lot of people use the locator. It's pretty cool. Uh, payments, this will show all the payments made by your troop digitally and at Capital One and credit cards online, okay? In the reference number, it'll say credit card online. It'll have um, a reference number if you go to Capital One. Um, you'll, once you see it, you'll, you'll understand it. Um, but yeah, there's nothing to enter here. This is all stuff that I would enter um, and for you to look at and make sure. So if you make a deposit, let's say on a Monday, um, it would probably get sent to me on Tuesday. So I would give it to Wednesday to show up in eBuddy. If by the end of the week, you don't see your deposit showing up, shoot me an email. Sometimes what happens is the bank is supposed to swipe your little deposit slip through their, through their reader um, so it codes with your troop number. If they don't do that correctly, then it comes through to me not attached to a troop. So I don't know to, I don't know who to give credit to, okay? So if you sense that, oh, this should have showed up already, just shoot me an email, date, amount of your deposit, and I find it and we fix it. Don't panic, you know, it's always findable. It's just sometimes there's a little bit of tweaks here and there. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is actually one of my favorite tabs. It's called the sales report. It gives you a little synopsis of everything that's going on. Um, tells you who your contacts are. It'll tell you what cookies were sold. Um, it'll also tell you what payments were made. And right here, it'll tell you what is due. So if you're not sure how much money the troop owes, you can look on this tab and it'll tell you right here. Unlike full, it'll be accurate. The full, the full screen is a little annoying. Um, but the cookies tab is always correct. The only time um, you're not going to see any proceeds here because then it throws that number off. So um, don't panic if you see zeros here in the proceeds section. I leave them out until it's time to do rebates. I put them in, I take them out, I do your rebate. Okay, so um, reports, nothing much here. 
Um, you're not going to use much here. You can use um, these reward reports to help you separate your rewards for your girls um, when they come in, but um, nothing much you're going to use there. There's a help center where you can look at the different manuals and things like that. Um, sometimes they're a little confusing because, um, again, this is like generic from the bakery. You're probably better off looking at our website um, because their manuals might be a little different than what we're telling you because we have to make the system work for us sometimes. Okay, so I'm going to check the chat. How is the paint amount handled for boot sales? When we assign to a girl, is the amount paid out of Oh, we did that already. Um, Kelly, I love your background. This looks complicated, but as easy as the full nut sale site. Yes, it, 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 it looks complicated, but I'm telling you right now, it's not. Once you touch it and you can feel it and play with it, you're like, this is not hard at all. So it just looks more complicated than it is. Um, and all the, if you like my background, on our website, once they upload all the new cookie stuff onto the GSSC website, you're going to be able to download the cookie backgrounds. This is actually from last year. Um, they had some really cute one that I didn't um, have time to download. It's supposed to look like you're wearing like an ugly sweater, <laughs> but um, I didn't have time to download it. But um, yeah, they're going to be all on our website, so that way you can use them for anything. You can use them to do parent Zooms for meetings for work. <laughs> Um, you want to try to sell some cookies to people at work, you can wear your, you know, do your cookie Zoom. The only thing I don't like is it always seems to cut half my head off, but, you know, whatever. Um, so does anybody have any additional questions? Okay, so we're pretty much done. Um, like I said, I'll probably be doing a subsequent um zoom as it gets closer to the boot sale time to let everybody know what's going on um you know that way we can all be on the same page it's just way too early to decide on anything of, of that nature yet um but hopefully things will move forward and not backward and um we'll be able to get the girls to do something as, as a little more normal than um zoom all the time so um thank you so much for coming out tonight um if you need anything, please feel free to email me. Just be a little bit patient because our staff went from 12 to two um, in product sales. So uh, we are answering and doing as much as we can, as fast as we can. Um, but I will get back to you. Just you might have to give me a little bit of time. Um, and then hopefully once cookie starts and if we can get more, more back into the norm, um, we'll get more staff going and we'll be able to you know, respond a little bit faster than we have been. Um, but again, thank you so much for coming. Um, I could definitely, this is actually being recorded. So um, what'll happen is, is this is gonna go up on the website. So that way you can um, watch it anytime you want. Um, do we use the email you send the Zoom for the contact? Yep, you can use that Zoom in the email to contact me. Um, how long do you wait for the info from the service unit? Um, I would give them, I would give them like to the end of the week. If you don't hear anything by next week, let me know and then I can touch base with them. You know, so that way, um, but like I said, they all just got their training. So they're probably all trying to get their, their work schedules and stuff together. Um, Laura put my, my email address in the chat log. So if anybody's looking for that, you could also email product sales at gssc.us. Um, the videos aren't up yet, but they will be. They'll be in the cookies and more section. Um, let me see if I can get there for you. Hold on. These are just my stupid uploads. Uh, GSSC.us. Right here is the cookies and more section. As you can see, they started up, my Zoom thing is in the way. They started um, uploading a little bit. If you notice, it's less full, a little bit more cookies. So um, it's just gonna, it just takes them a little bit of time to fit everything in. Uh, for cookie sellers, they'll be for cookie volunteers. Meet the cookies. So you'll see everything in this section over here that says cookies and more. And if you can't, if you wanna pay your true bill online, you could do that right here. And if you ever don't find something, search it because usually it pops up. Uh, meet the cookies for cookie sellers. Gives them a little bit info there. But under the, the section that'll say for cookie volunteers, it'll have all the resources 
all the trainings, all the forms, everything you need. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I, I'm trying, I tried to get you off as fast as I could. And like I said, just don't stress. Um, it's a lot to take in. Um, and just take each phase as it comes, okay? Thank you so much for coming, everyone. Thank you, Laura, for moderating. Anytime. You're welcome. Cal, I'm going to save the chat log that way in case anyone, any questions you need to refer back to, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to stop recording as soon as I get this.